This is a gravity shower in my 6x12 tiny house and I'm going to show you how it works. So what makes this seemingly typical sit-down RV shower different than you would find in most other RVs is that I do not have pressurized water and this shower operates on gravity water. And while it does have a hot and a cold, neither one of those regulate hot or cold. They're just both open to let water flow because I only have a small air hole up here at the top that lets air into the gravity tank behind this wall. And I preheat the water to whatever temperature I'm gonna be showering in. So these just both stay open to keep the water flow as much as I can get it. Also, because this is a really low pressure water and I'm only using three gallons to take a shower, getting a shower head was just about impossible because they all have holes that are too big. So what I did was I took PEX plumbing pieces and I just MacGyvered together my own shower head. And then that red shower head at the end is actually from one of those Coleman, I think they're like camping shower bags. And I cut that off and put it into the end of there because it has such little holes that it creates a nice shower effect with really low water pressure. So it would have been ideal to have the tank above the ceiling outside, but that would have been a nightmare because I would have had to engineer it so that air was circulating through it in the winter so that it wouldn't freeze. So I put the tank as high as I could up in the wall behind the shower, right behind these faucets, and that is why I have a sit-down shower, so that I can wash my hair with as much water pressure as is possible. This cupboard is where the tank is, and that's a four gallon water tank that feeds the shower, and I'll show you that plumbing here. So there's the four gallon tank inside of this kind of cabinet, this is where I keep all my personal crap, and you can see that it has a pipe that goes into the shower that's the airline and that's also the overflow so that if I overfilled this for some reason it would just go out into the shower and not cause a flood and then here is the plumbing going into the actual shower and that's why I have the two uh, faucets turned on so I can get as much water pressure as I can out of this gravity tank Right here is that pipe that comes out of the gravity tank that lets air into it and also if it overflows so it would just come into the shower. So then the question becomes, how do I fill that tank up with water and how do I heat it? <laughs> Prior to building this tiny house, I did have an RV. It was a 27 foot RV, a travel trailer. And it was a constant source of irritation to me because a lot of things broke in it and the things that break are expensive, like water heaters and furnaces. And I had it flood twice. Twice the plumbing broke open and flooded. Disaster, that's what it is. So in this tiny house, I was not gonna have pressurized water. Was it a compromise and do you have to learn to live with gravity fed water? You do, because it's a lot less pressure. And I also have gravity water here in the kitchen and it also feeds the toilet. That's a whole other video. So how do I heat that water for the shower and how do I get it over to that tank? Well, the old fashioned way. With a 1.75 gallon teapot, that's how, that stays right under here with all of my other pots and pans. This is my giant teapot. It's seven quarts or 1.75 gallons and I use a little over three gallons of water to shower. And yes, I know, lots of people will say three gallons is not enough water to shower. I've been doing this for almost six years living in this house, and I am perfectly fine with my three gallon shower. The water pressure is a lot lower, but it still takes about 15 minutes to take the full shower because the water comes out so slow and you get just as clean. I'm telling you. So I just fill that little guy up from my kitchen faucet, and that is my kitchen gravity water. So the pressure's not that horrible. And then when we're done filling that guy up, he just goes right on the stove. And since I'm only heating one, really it's not quite 1.75 gallons, because I mean I fill it up to about here. So 
between one and a half and one and three quarters. Just goes right on the stove. And there we go. Hot water heater. I also use a ton less propane than my fellow RVers here at the park that I live in. So one of my 20 pound tanks will last me easily almost two months. So when I fill the two of them up on the front of my trailer and I cook every day and I shower every day, it's usually about four months before I have to get propane again. So they're heating up six gallons of water at a time in their hot water heater. I'm only doing like one and three quarters. So before I put this on the stove to heat up, I use it to fill about two gallons of water into this three gallon bug sprayer that I store under my kitchen cabinet. It's really more than three gallons. This is three gallons, but when I fill it up, it comes to about here. So it's, I think closer to three and a half is what I actually shower with. So what I did with this is I took the original flexible hose and I just plumbed it in to the PEX plumbing system that actually feeds the gravity shower tank. So that pipe, it runs from here through all this you can see where it comes out and then it goes down and underneath the cabinet behind all those canned goods is where I have permanently attached this and that is how I fill my gravity shower with hot water so typically in the winter I let that water in the tea kettle heat up till it actually boils and then along with the two gallons of cold water it makes a really nice hot shower in the summer I have a little uh, thermometer I throw in the top of that just like that. And I heat the water up to 160. That's a nice temperature with that cold water in the tank for a summer shower. You still have to get this water in with this water and get all that water over here. And we do that the old fashioned way. Pour it in. And then good old manual labor. 200 pumps to get the water over there. <laughs> it's a good workout every morning. So on the left side of the gravity tank, you can see the back pipe is coming from the sprayer that we pressurized and pumped the water over up through the wall. And then the pipe in the front is the one that actually goes over into the shower to let air into the tank and for overflow if I overfilled it. So here's an example of the water pressure for you. And I know for some people having such low pressure would be a no-go, but I've totally gotten used to it and I love my shower because when you shut the door and you turn on the hot water, it actually steams it up in here. So when you shut this off to lather up, you're really super comfortable. So I sit down to wash my hair and the bottom half of my body that's why i have a sit down shower but there's plenty of pressure in this when you stand up to do the lower half of your body and here is the water pressure so for me this is plenty of water pressure i know it seems little <laughs> but you can still get clean with it it just takes a little longer The other really nice thing about having the gravity water is because I live on tanks in my house, so where I live it gets cold. So no matter how cold it is outside, I don't have to worry about that because all my water's in here and I'm always going to have a nice hot shower no matter how cold it is outside. <laughs> so how about I give you a real world example of how the shower works. The other day, I took you in there with me. <laughs> and here's how these cool modern RV shower doors work. You didn't think I was bringing you all the way in the shower, did you? So I'm going to show you how easy this shower is to use and that even with super low water pressure, you can still get the job done. I have this handy shower holder for when I'm sitting down. It just makes life more simple. And yep, I'm going to use shampoo to wash my face, because I can, and I do. If you've never used a scalp massager, you should get one. 
but it feels really good. So even with low water pressure, you can still get a good shower. Just like that, we are cleaned up. So in December of 2022, I discovered there was a small crack in the bottom of my shower. It's really called a step tub. And when I installed it in late 2018, they come with a piece of styrofoam that's underneath the entire floor pan and it says all over it, do not remove for installation. And in my mind I thought, that's crazy because this piece of styrofoam is eventually going to compress and it's going to cause indents where I'm standing in the shower. But I followed the instructions and you build a platform, install the tub, and that piece of styrofoam sits really snugly on top of that piece of plywood. Well, eventually it did deform and it caused a crack in my tub because on the bottom of the shower pan is a textured part around the whole shower pan and then it's smooth around it and in that differentiating line around there behind my left heel it cracked so it cost me 750 bucks to get a new step tub and a new surround because when i ripped it out it destroyed it and three days of labor hmm. so when i put the new one in I ripped that piece of styrofoam off and I re-engineered the platform so it's an inch higher so that the bottom of that plastic tub is right on top of that plywood now and firm as can be. Lesson learned. <laughs> so I have a few pictures of ripping out the bathtub and installing the new one about a little over a year ago. They're vertical, not horizontal, because they weren't filmed for YouTube, I just sent them to my family. But in the meantime, it was like three months before I could get it all replaced. I kept putting this patch on it, but it still seeped water down, and it didn't do any damage to my floor, luckily, but it did damage the original platform. So that got ripped out, and of course the new one got built. It had to be rebuilt anyway to raise it to meet the bottom of the bathtub with the styrofoam removed. Here they are. Well, I'm very sad today because I have to rip out my entire bathtub and surround because of that damn crack in it. Arr. Progress. That was very difficult to get out because it was glued in. Progress. Now that faulty thing comes out. Success! All ripped out. Now it's time for renovations and repairs where it got wet. Arr. Well, that was a lot of work. Arr. So tomorrow comes the shower door and all the caulking. All around there. How about that? A new shower door installed. Ta da! Ta da! about here look at that bug in my house it's winter where did this bug come from what the hell that's a mosquito that was a mosquito